I've made quite a few different Game Boy Pocket colors now. A few of Natalie's kits and a few of Bucket Mouse's. And for those who don't know what I'm talking about, GBPCs are Game Boy Color guts that have been modified to fit inside of a Game Boy Pocket shell. Cool, right? As much as I like these, it does mean you're gonna get less battery life, and in my opinion, it's not as comfortable as the GBC. But what if you could have a longer battery life and a thicker, arguably more comfortable shell? Let's build the DMG BC. This is another bucket mouse special, and I believe this actually came before the GBPC. But just like with the other Pocos, this is not for beginners. It's also not cheap with four boards to assemble. Thankfully for me, this time PCBWay took care of the bill. If you don't know, PCBWay makes, well, PCBs, and can even assemble them with all the components your projects may need. They also offer 3D printing, CNC machining, and other similar services to help you make your projects awesome on the inside and out. My favorite part of PCBWay is their pages of community-made projects. You'll see a ton of cool things to build, and a lot of them can be made entirely through PCBWay services, just like the Frog Boy color that I put together recently with the help of PCBWay. You can also find today's DMG color boards on the same community tab, and with their assembly service, you can have all of the aftermarket components soldered on for you, just like mine. Thank you to PCBWay for sponsoring this part of the video. Now back to the part where I have to do the work. This is an entirely brand new board with a lot of fresh aftermarket components, which is something that I love so I don't have to transfer every single little tiny component. And while that does make life easier, this is still difficult to complete. The only things that I had to do were solder down the CPU and crystal from a GBC, as well as the link port, power switch, cart slot, and transferring all of the pieces from the headphone jacks board of a DMG. Otherwise, PCBWay did everything else for me. Honestly, they could have done everything for the headphone jack board too, minus the headphone jack, but I wanted to see if I could just use the original board here. It did not work for me, but I also think that that board was dead because I pulled it off of a DMG from my graveyard bin. But let's start from the beginning and go over how to do this. Assuming you have your board as pre-assembled as me, start by removing all of your components I mentioned earlier from your donor GBC and DMG. I like to use hot air, a solder sucker, my soldering iron, and a ton of flux to do this. From there, we can just install all of those pieces on our new boards. Simple enough, right? I like to start with soldering on the CPU in crystal with hot air, and then checking all of the pins under the microscope. I ended up struggling with this section here, and even after all of the work I did over in this corner, I still didn't have them all fully soldered down, which caused my screen to look like this, and it wouldn't read my games. I eventually fixed it later off camera, but moral of the story is check all of your CPU pins thoroughly and RAM if you do the RAM yourself. I actually got that done by PCBWay, which was kind of a shock to me. Thankfully, adding the link port, power switch, and cart slot was pretty simple and straightforward. Like the Game Boy Pocket Color, you can't just reuse the original power board, but we can reuse the wires to attach the little boards to the CPU board. You just need an extra wire for the power board. The power board was fully assembled for me, so nothing to worry about there, but even transferring all the headphone board pieces wasn't too bad. I didn't record that part, but the only tip I think you'll need is I recommend flush cutting these pieces off because they fell apart when I tried to desolder them the first time, or you could just buy the new components for them. You can find more information on that in the GitHub that I'll link down below. Now we can finish up with installing the IPS screen. I recommend getting an IPS ready shell so you don't have to do a bunch of trimming. However, you you will need to get this very specific GBC Q5 screen kit from High Speed Edo. That's because this one allows us to actually adjust the screen position. Installing the rest is pretty straightforward. I didn't make a full scale tutorial for this one, but I will have a walkthrough on the second channel, Jake64, with some tips and tricks that I found along the way. Like last week's video, I had some top down camera blunders here, so it honestly wasn't the best as a tutorial, but you can still watch and learn from my mistakes. Sadly, this time I didn't make any extras to sell on my website, but if you want me to maybe do a limited drop, let me know in those comments down below. Of course, you can always buy a ton of other pre-modded consoles, cool shirts like this one, and even my very own Game Boy game over at RetroRemaster.com. However, like my last GBPC video, I'm not gonna focus on the IPS screen here. I've discussed IPS screens in plenty of videos for the Game Boy Color specifically on this channel, and the second channel. So I'll link to my IPS kit comparison video down below if you really are interested in that. 
But for this video, I want to focus on reviewing the mod process and compare it to the other mods that are like it. I mean, to my knowledge, this is the only mod that actually does the GBC in a DNG shell. But compared to the GBPCs of the world, this thing rocks. I love it so much more. I love me a thick boy. And now that I have a thick boy color that has insane battery life with four double A's, I think this could be my new go to GBC, but probably not. There is one thing that I really do not like about this mod, and it makes me not want to play it very much. The clicky switches. To be clear, this is my fault. I should have told PCBWay to not add the switches when I was reviewing the bill of materials, but I didn't. And I would just remove the switches, but for some reason, I didn't make these boards with ENIG, so I'm worried that the button accuracy will not be great. While I don't normally prefer clicky buttons, the way that the clicky button mods are done for the Game Boy models is bad. The problem is, you still have to use the membranes so the plastic can actually click in the switches. And that means you essentially have to press the button twice to actually get it to register. The membranes can be depressed and feel like you press the button, but you'll need to press a little harder to get the clicky switch to depress as well. I genuinely hate that. So I tried making some 3D printed inserts for the buttons to avoid the membrane issue, but I couldn't get it to work well either. In the end, I ripped the graphite pads off of the membranes and super glued them to the buttons. But even still, it actually starts to hurt my hands after like 20 minutes of Wario Land. Again, all of this could have been avoided if I just made the boards with ENIG and excluded the clicky switches. I'm just sad that I didn't do that and I wanted to rant about clicky button mods for Game Boys. However, I did actually exclude one thing from this build, and that was the LEDs. Not because they waste a little extra battery life, not worried about battery life here. It's because the way it was entered in the like bill of materials for the assembly service side of things, it ended up heavily increasing the price of this mod by like, a lot. And PCBWay was like, no, we're not paying for this. This is out of your budget. And I'm like, okay, I'll remove the LEDs because I think it was like a multi pack of LEDs on the bill of materials, but it wasn't taking into account that you only needed one of those multi packs. It was like doing multiple LED packs for each LED placement on the board, something like that. So I just ended up excluding it. I'm fine without the LEDs. And if I really want to add them later, I can. So it'd be nice to see Bucket Mouse like change that for the bill of materials for PCB white people. But that's just like a minor thing. It's not that big of a deal. I just wanted to mention it here. But let's be positive again for a minute. Like I said in my GBPC video, my favorite part of this whole mod is that the contrast wheel makes a return in the best possible way. There's no contrast wheel on the GBC. And instead of having that slot in the shell be empty, Bucket Mouse added on an aftermarket rocker to replace those godforsaken touchpads. Touchpads are the bane of my existence, and this is honestly the best way to take care of them. And I know it sounds like I've complained for a bit in this video, but I don't have any real complaints about this mod. I do have some things I'd like to see added to this project though. Like it would be cool to see the power board just be a part of the CPU board. That way it brings the cost down a little bit since it would be one less board. Also less work for me. And I would love to have even more aftermarket pieces be usable here, like the power switches and headphone jacks, since those are very often the dead pieces on junk Game Boy boards. No matter what, I still think this project is awesome and I love it. If you really want to play Game Boy Color games on an original Game Boy and have the skills to do this mod, I highly recommend Bucket Mouse's DMGBC. But what do you guys think? DMGBC or GBPC? Let me know in those comments down below. Thanks again to PCBWay for sponsoring this video. I will have the link to this project on PCBWay's website in the description, as well as any and all other links I mentioned today. But that's about it for me. So like, subscribe, and I will see you guys in the next one. Later, guys. Also, for some reason, I can do this. Turns on when I press down here. I think it's because it's shorting the power switch to turn on because power switch was off.